To anyone familiar with Spain's history, it comes as no surprise that the country has fostered a number of fraught relationships across religious and cultural divides. One prominent source of recall with regards to these relationships is Moorish and Sephardic architecture. Nowhere is history more visible, or more tangible, than communal architecture, especially religio-cultural centers. With the goal of visualizing appropriation, today I'll be taking a look at the Spanish Christian expropriation of significant Sephardic religious constructions, specifically the synagogues of El Transito and Santa Maria la Blanca, both of which are located in the ancient city of Toledo. The El Transito Synagogue is the common name for the synagogue of Samuel Halavi, a scion of an old Jewish family, and is one of the most important examples of Spanish Jewish art in existence. It was built in the 14th century and was located inside the medieval Jewish quarter, Juderia, at a central location within the walls of the city of Toledo. The synagogue was intended to serve as a private house of worship for Samuel Halavi and was connected to his house by a private gate. In 1360, Samuel Halavi was arrested by King Pedro and tortured to death. El Transito was removed from his possession and seized by the state. 132 years later, after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492, the synagogue was granted to a Spanish Catholic religious order. Thus began the conversion of El Transito. In order to fit the needs of Christian worship, the main prayer hall was converted into a church known as the Iglesia de San Benito, and a bell tower was built onto the exterior in the 16th century. The name El Transito developed in the 17th century, during which time San Benito was known as Ermita del Transito, shortened popularly from El Transito de Nuestra Señora, or Our Lady's Transit. The original name of the synagogue is not known. In deference to its history, some modern authors tend to call it after its founder. During the 18th century, the complex housed a monastery, and it underwent a long series of restorations and renovations through the 1960s. It wasn't until 1970 that the synagogue was recognized once more as a Jewish space, when it was converted into the National Museum of Judeo-Spanish Art. Over the 600 years that Catholicism was practiced in the space, it retained most of its Sephardic design. The design of the synagogue recalls the Nasrid style of architecture that was employed during the same period in the decorations of the Alhambra Palace in Granada, as well as the Mesquita of Córdoba. The interior walls of the prayer hall are decorated with colorful geometric and floral motifs, characteristic of the Mudejar art of the age. It is possible that their pattern might have been inspired by the lavish textiles imported from the Muslim-ruled regions of southern Spain. The most elaborate decoration was reserved for the eastern wall, which still has three niches that used to shelter the Holy Ark with the Torah scrolls. Its upper section features an arcade of sepfoil arches, and the central section is covered with arabesque patterns. The artesonado ceiling is made of cedar wood and is divided into six sections by large pairs of beams. Tradition has it that the wood was brought by Samuel Halavi from Lebanon in imitation of King Solomon. The original floor was covered by mosaics, of which only fragments have survived. Light enters from a number of windows in the upper section of the walls. Perhaps the most impressive elements of the interior decoration are the numerous Hebrew and Arabic inscriptions that adorn the walls, arches, and columns. The Hebrew inscriptions in particular are undoubtedly one of the most remarkable examples of medieval Jewish monumental epigraphy. Many of the texts are taken from the Bible. Others glorify Samuel Halavi and Meir Abdel, the synagogue's architect. The frieze on the upper section of the eastern wall boasts the Hebrew inscription, Behold the sanctuary that is consecrated in Israel and the house that Samuel built. The inscriptions in Arabic bear witness to the high status enjoyed by the Arabic culture among the Jews of Spain, even amongst those living under Christian rule. Notably, a number of inscriptions are dedicated to King Pedro, the very monarch who brought about the building's appropriation. The coat of arms of the Kingdom of Castile is also repeated a number of times on the walls of the synagogue as proof of the loyalty of the local Jews to the king. A short 200 yards to the north of the Sephardi Museum stands the synagogue of Santa Maria la Blanca. Larger than El Transito, this second surviving synagogue's name also evokes the particular complexities of its converso identity. La Blanca stands today as a precious yet self-effacing trace of the living presence of an unresolved past. The exact origins and original specifications of the synagogue proved difficult to place. Evidence points toward a construction date sometime in the late 12th century or early 13th century. Like El Transito, La Blanca has experienced several conversions. 
the synagogue became a church during the anti-Jewish riots of 1411. The Dominican priest, Vincente Ferrer, had come to Toledo a few years before to preach a series of sermons to the Jews. Because of Spain's harsh methods of converting Jews at the time, the means which Ferrer had at his disposal were either baptism or spoliation. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Ferrer won over the Jews by preaching, converting an estimated 25,000 Sephardim. The building became a monastery in 1550. The monks named it Santa Maria la Blanca in an effort to drive out the perceived darkness of its Jewish past. After the monks abandoned the space, it became a warehouse and armory for a company that manufactures bullfight swords still to this day. Changes in ownership were common as well. The state declared La Lanca a national patrimony in 1856, and in 1939, Francisco Franco donated it to the Catholic Church. In 2013, the Jewish community of Toledo asked the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Toledo to transfer ownership and custodianship of the building back to the Jews. Under this request, the Archbishop met twice with the President of Spain's Federation of Jewish Communities, who claimed that there was no contemporary Jewish community in Toledo. He also said that the Federation was not looking to reclaim Santa Maria la Blanca as a place of worship, but as a symbolic gesture. Thus far, there has been no judicial recourse over the matter because the modern Jewish community are not direct descendants of the original owners. The building, the third most visited historic monument in Toledo, is presently a museum and is not used for any religious ceremonies. With regards to its architecture, the synagogue of Santa Maria la Blanca also retained its Mudejar origins. The floor plan is an irregular quadrilateral divided into five aisles, with the central nave aisle slightly larger than the remaining four. The interior features a series of arcades supported on a network of 24 octagonal piers and eight engaged piers. These octagonal supports line the central aisle of the synagogue and support the large arcade of horseshoe arches above. The arches rest on intricately detailed mudejar capitals with finely carved pine cones and other vegetal imagery. The focal point of the synagogue is the scallop shell topped arch at the center of the building. This was the location of the Torah Ark. In many synagogues found throughout the Jewish diaspora and what is now Israel, the scallop shell motif is a marker for the location where a portable ark should be placed. Notice the ark niche in juxtaposition with the cross. The building is also surrounded by a courtyard, which used to serve as a place for the people to congregate before and after prayer services. The rabbi's residence, a ritual bath, a study hall, and other things the community may have invested in were all built in this courtyard to give the Jewish community a central place for care of their spiritual needs. Considering both synagogues, El Transito and Santa Maria la Blanca, the memory of Jewish Spain as a marker of nostalgia and utopia has been busy at work for many centuries. The paradoxes of the splendor, destruction, and fragmentary survival of Jewish Spain are encapsulated in these synagogues. To physically enter either space is to enter a certain void. Neither synagogue houses any furniture or interior decoration other than the architecture itself. El Transito boasts some activity in the way of cultural engagement, educational courses, and guides, considering its status as a historical museum. But Santa Maria la Blanca remains largely empty. The emptiness is something of a testament to the intangibility of Sephardic heritage in Spain, so little of Spain's Jewish history is visible because, frankly, the Jews have never been in charge. The architecture is as tangible as this history will ever get. There has been much emphasis on restorative efforts for both synagogues for this exact reason. The questions of what remains and what is remembered hit particularly hard with these two buildings. Interestingly, the void has not been intentionally produced in order to awaken the public's consciousness of the destruction of Jewish life in Spain. Rather, the void exists only as a result of that destruction. It is not surprising that so many people have come to embrace the possibilities offered by these synagogues, to fill them with their own desires, anxieties, and hopes for the future of remembrance.